The, the fact that this is $24, you can get this at $12 retail and get the same attributes that you get in this wine. You're getting robbed. Hey, I'm Samoye Andre Houston Mack, and today I'm gonna to be tasting wines by these celebrities. I'm excited. We have musicians, we have actors, and we have athletes, and we're tasting them all today. After our first episode of Celebrity Wines, we got a lot of feedback and a lot of comments about the wines in the selections. A lot of these wines today were requested by you. So first up, we have Gordon Ramsay. You might know him from Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmare, all his various shows. But this is a guy who's very serious in the kitchen. I think he has the most Michelin stars in England. We'll see what he knows about wine. So here we have Sauvignon Blanc from Monterey County, Gordon Ramsay, 2019. A little lemon lime. Funny enough, I get it like a little bit of gooseberry something that I would normally find in a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. There's some acid to it. I'd like it to be a little bit leaner. I want it to have more of an edge. This is pretty decent Sauvignon Blanc. For me, I think this is well made from the regions that, it, that it's from. Once you add the element of food to it, it becomes a more delightful experience. Monterey is an interesting wine growing region. You know, it reminds me a lot of Chateau Neuf de Pop. You know, it's a dried out riverbed and it has lots of like stone, so it's really great for drainage. So the water can creep down all the way down to the roots, which makes for healthy grapevines. Now the question leads me, would Gordon Ramsay serve this wine in his restaurant? I believe that he would. This is a caliber of wine that could be served at any one of his restaurants here in this country. Emoji, emoji. Smiley face with sunglasses on. This is like a cool wine. Maybe put a chef's hat on top. So next up we have Leonardo DiCaprio. This is Champagne Tillman, and this is the Reserve de la Terre. You know, when I look at this label, it looks pretty modern for a champagne house. Generally, it's got script lettering on it. And then I think the biggest thing that kind of stands out is the closure. Normally what you would look at in champagne, it would have a metal cage and this has rope. You always want to put your thumb on the top of the cork to make sure that it doesn't jump out or explode. I'm going to use this corkscrew to kind of get underneath here. This is a little tricky. Hey Leo, help me out here. Show us how to open this on the website or something here. See, you see, I took my thumb off for one second and you see that it's starting to release here. All right, let's, there we go. All right, this pressure is on and we made it. Awesome, we got it open. So that was an old closure method. They use string before they use metal cages. And that was very difficult to open. When it foams up, that's called the mousse. The bubbles are really tiny, so you can see that they're still going. So that's a sign of quality. So this is elegant, this is champagne. You know, I get like a little bit of like butterscotch and honeysuckle. You know, I feel like it's, it's lacking a little bit. It's not a lot of acidity. It just feels like it doesn't have the zipper zing that I would expect. And at this price point, $90, I would be looking for something a little bit more expressive. So the goal of this winery is to produce organic fruit and also be 100% sustainable. And I think that's a really big reason why Leonardo is a part of this particular project. Does it being sustainable, does that affect the price point? Yeah, it does. But there's also people who are making great wines at 28 bucks that kind of really set the standard for sustainability. I think for me, there's better examples of champagne at a lower cost than this particular one. Because I really want this wine, I really want to like this wine, I was just expecting so much more from it and it just kind of fall flat. For that reason, I'm gonna give it the straight mouth emoji. All right, so now we have John Bon Jovi and this is Hampton Water and this is a rosé from the south of France from the Lunderdoc. So that's a region in the southern part of France. Lots of great wine comes from there. So first impressions, it's very clean bottle here. I think my attention is drawn to the top. So this is a glass closure. If you're gonna enjoy something, a wine that's meant to be enjoyed young, fresh, these are probably a better way to go than cork. It's definitely more sustainable in that way because you're not gonna age this wine. And then this should just pop kind of right off here. There we go, voila. Uh, and then you can put it right back in the bottle. So if you don't drink it all, you put it right back in the bottle, you can put it right back in the refrigerator. It smells like cotton candy to me. A little bit of strawberry, citrus peel, pretty good acid. It's a little bit of minerality to it. Decent acidity. You know, if I was thinking about typically what you get from the Languedoc, strawberry flavors, a little bit of citrus. It does have like a slight floral note to it. It definitely has like Rome varietal heavy. The breakdown of grapes on the back of a wine is generally an American thing. When you think about wines from Europe, when you look at the bottle, they're named after a place. So it's a sense of place, a sense of taste, a sense of smell. In America, we name things after the grape varietal so you know what's in there. And so it's just a, a different train of thought. Well, this is $20. I don't know if that's an affordable price point. If it was more closer to like 17, I would feel like that it had more value to it but I'm not mad at this wine, this is, this is good wine. You know, I'm gonna give this the okay emoji. Like, I think this is, this is good wine, it's okay if that's your jam and you should enjoy it. So next up from Eric Wareheim, from Tim and Eric, and also from Master of None, is Las Jerez Wines, and this is actually called Glug Glug. So the name is supposed to be reminiscent of the sound that you make when you're actually drinking the wine. Maybe more like guzzling the wine. It's a French term, 
and it goes like glug glug. So generally you don't see red wine in a clear bottle and that has to do with aging a wine. You wanna protect the wine from the sunlight and so the wine can actually age and have some type of longevity to it. This wine is meant to be consumed right when you purchase it, hence the name, glug glug. It reminds me just off the nose, uh, slightly dusty, slightly leathery, like, like an old antique store. Pomegranate, that's good. What I'm most surprised about this particular wine, the way that it's made doesn't outshine of the place that it comes from. And when I say that, I mean, this definitely falls into that category of natural wine, and that's not the first thing that I smell when I smell it in the glass. It's not this, this natty, bready thing. This is great, due to like the blends or the grapes or that they put in it, but like this is just something fun that you don't really have to think about, and it definitely stands up to its name as being chuggable in a way, hence glue glue. It'd be interesting to see how the Sapaja grapes changed from the previous year. 2021 was a big fire year in California. There definitely was some frost in 2020. People underestimate the role that Mother Nature plays in, in making quality wine, and it's a big factor here, especially for low intervention wines. We're not doing a lot of stuff in the winery after the grapes come in. So Mother Nature is really dictating what the wine is gonna taste like. Whether you're a fan of Eric or not, this is a cool wine, I would drink this wine. I'm probably gonna say that the wine is probably about 25 bucks, 29? 28. 28. At $28, I feel like this is good. You're not getting ripped off. You know, it's kind of the bomb for 28 bucks. This is good. I say this wine is the bomb. Let's give it a bomb emoji. So next up we have Kurt Russell. This is the Goji Chardonnay 2018, and this is called Goldie after his partner, Goldie Hunt. Yeah, I mean, besides the label, I think the first thing that jumps out to me is the wax top. You're starting to see it more and more. This is just a more jazzier way to dress up the bottle. It gets a little tricky when you open it here. I think a lot of people try to cut it off like you do a foil. It's pretty simple. You just go straight through the top. It's very easy. Here we go. And it just pops right off. And you see how it just breaks pretty clean? Looks like Chardonnay. Smells like Chardonnay, but slightly different. So generally when I think about California Chardonnay, what do I get? You get buttery, oaky, over the top, popcorn butter, those types of things. This is not that at all. In a really great way, this reminds me a lot of like white burgundy. So Chardonnay from France, an old world style of Chardonnay. Lots of minerality, smells like rocks. It's a little bit of honeysuckle. The reason why we have those classifications, new world and old world, is because of the weather patterns. So if you take something like Chardonnay and plant it in California, then it tends to be bigger, have more alcohol, more fruit and so kind of like over the top. In Europe, it's a little bit more subtle. It's not as hot. Well, I don't know what the alcohol is, but it's pretty big, 14.3. So that's a big wine, long, long finish. I still feel it in my mouth. When we talk about finish, it's just basically how long you can taste the wine after, after you swallow it and after it's been in your mouth. Whew, my mouth is on fire. If I'm judging the wine off its quality of what it is, it's a good wine. I think the wine is well made. I think at $50, you get what you pay for. If I had to give this wine an emoji, I would give it the smiley face with the big stars in it, right? This is a Hollywood wine. This is flashy and great and iconic. So next up we have Kyle MacLachlan. This is 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon called Pursued by Bear. So many of you might know him from Twin Peaks, the original Dune, and for you young folks out there, maybe you know him as the mayor from Portlandia, but he also makes wine. This is from Washington, Columbia Valley, the big Goran region there. A little bit more specifically within the Columbia Valley is a region called Walla Walla. They make terrific Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah. This is Cabernet. I'm really excited to taste this wine. So Pursued by Bear is a stage direction from a Shakespeare play called A Winter's Tale. Oh, crazy raspberry, almost kind of sweet, almost confectionery. There's some cedar, leather, graphite. That's pretty tasty, big finish. It's not overly oaky, slight little bit of vanilla, but a little bit more cinnamon. You know, this wine is really expressive. I mean, there's lots of nuance and layers to the wine. The fruit elements, the underbrush. It's got a lot of alcohol, but it's pretty well balanced in that way. You can still get the essence of the fruit. So in general, if I'm talking about New World wines, and if we're talking about, like, say, United States in general, a lot of times the wines are too ripe, too overdeveloped. In a cooler place like Walla Walla, they're not overly ripe and over the top. This is a great example of one of the great Cabernets from Washington State. $70 here is a fair price. This is a serious wine. I like this wine. I think it's a strong showing. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it the strong arm emoji. There you go, Kyle. Good job. All right, so next up it looks like Cameron Diaz. This is called Aveline. This is a white wine blend. I think looking on the back here, it's actually from Spain but bottled here in California. And it's a mix of grapes that you would generally find in the northern part of Spain. Exilio, Macabeo, and Malvasia. So that combination seems right to me. Don't see a vintage date on it. It's bright, it's clear. As a white wine starts to age, it gets darker in color. So not knowing the vintage of when this comes from, this wine looks light and doesn't look like it's been aged. Pears, apple, kind of reminds me of applesauce when I was a little kid. 
It's actually pretty tasty. It's got some really great acid, a little bit of grassy notes to it. It's refreshing. To be honest with you, I feel like you could get this wine for half the cost. This wine is $24, so which only leads me to believe that you're paying for the name. And the fact that it doesn't even come with a vintage has me lost a little bit. From this particular area in Spain, you're gonna typically get, you know, high acid, low wood whites, uh, that kind of tastes like the ocean with a little bit of melon and really fresh and crisp acidity. And I feel like you get that in this particular wine, but I just don't think that the value's there. You're getting robbed, you know what I mean? Like, like there's nothing wrong with this wine at all. It's actually really great and delicious. And if you want to pay $24, by all means, go ahead. All I'm saying is that there's not enough value in that when I know that you can get the wine for half the price. So the emoji for this wine, I'm going to give it the imposter emoji. I feel like this wine is fake in the funk. It's not authentic in that way that you can get a better for half the price. All right, so next up we have Graham Norton of The Graham Norton Show. And this is his Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Actually, if you guys didn't know who Graham Norton was, there's a picture of him on the back. So you can see him there. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, this is uh, 2021. This smells like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Gooseberries, citrus, lots of grapefruit. Very herbaceous. It reminds me a lot of um, canned green beans. I get that a lot in New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, so it's not a bad thing. And New Zealand's an island, right? So you definitely get the influence of the, of the ocean. So what we always talk about is those kind of hot days and cool nights, and you get pretty high altitude, which give the wine a little bit more lift and acidity. This is New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. This is what they do, straight up exactly what they do. Kind of going through my thought process of how I'm evaluating any of these. Is it classic? Is it well-made? Is it indicative of the place that it comes from? And I think it checks all of those boxes. And then I try to look at price point. $18.99, I mean, you can get good examples of this on the shelf for 14, 18 is not a stretch. This is like a feel good wine, right? Like you drink this wine, like how could you not be happy? This is like great. You know, I'm thinking an island emoji. There's gotta be an island emoji. And not that this is a desert island wine, it's just where I'd like to drink this wine. Hanging out with friends on an island. So next up we have Kevin Love and Channing Fry. This is Chosen Family Winery. This is 2019 Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. I'm really excited because I love Pinot Noir and Willamette Valley Pinot Noir is really good. I'm just gonna pull this off here. I just couldn't wait. I'm just gonna pull it off and we're just gonna go right in. Okay, that's looking great. It's got that P-Funk. So that P-Funk is like that Pinot Funk. Barnyard, Mousy. Those are all good things, good things. Yeah, I'm getting like tart cherries, raspberries, a little bit of allspice. This wine is delicious. The Willamette Valley is about 150 miles long, about 50 miles wide. And to me, it's one of the greatest examples of Pinot Noir made in, in the United States. The Willamette Valley climate is very similar to a great region in France called Burgundy. It rains quite a bit. Pinot Noir is a really thin skinned grape, very fickle, and you kind of have to have perfect conditions to kind of get it right. You want to have hot days so the grapes can ripen phenolically, cool nights so the grapes can retain some type of acidity. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It has that fruit that you associate with California, meets that terroir, taste of the land that you get from the old world. I like this wine. I think this wine is great. $35 Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. That's expensive considering that the average bottle I think is like $15 or $10, but the quality is here. I think this wine kind of over delivers at $35. For emoji here, I'm going to do the money with wings. I feel like this wine over delivers. You get a little something extra than what you paid for uh, and who doesn't like that? All right, so next up we have Ricky Rosé, Rick Ross. This is Bel Air Rosé from France. I don't believe that it is champagne, but it is sparkling wine from France. If this was champagne, it would probably be more expensive and it would definitely say it on the bottle. This is just a little marketing tag here. It said experience, real French rosé. That doesn't mean to me. It is from France. Uh, the whole idea of real, I don't know what that means. This looks cool. I mean, it's a clear bottle so you can see the color of rosé on it. This is a typical cage that you have here. So it's about six half turns. You always want to keep your thumb on the top of the cork here. And then we just want to kind of slowly twist. And you don't want to make the big loud pop. You just want to like just barely make it come out. There we go. So this is definitely easier than opening Leo Champagne. Let's get the party started. So this is mainly Syrah, which is a thick skin gray that gives off a deep color even when you use it for rosé. Oh, a little raspberry, strawberry. It's a little bit of grapefruit, a little bit of white pepper. To me, it feels like the wine is super carbonated. I'm not sure that it was made in the traditional method. Can't say that it's trash, but like, you know what I mean? Like, like to, you're overpaying for this particular wine. I'm sure for some of it, you're paying for Rick Ross. And I would definitely use this wine if I was gonna pair it with cheese. Like people get caught in this mindset, oh, you have to have red wine with cheese, but a sweet, slightly sweet wine with cheese is complimentary, but like on its own, it's not pleasurable to me at all. Emoji time. I'm gonna give it a teardrop. I'm gonna give it a sad face, like just one tear. I thought it was gonna be better, and that makes me sad. All right, so we have the 2018 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon from Yao Ming of basketball fame. 
Actually, he was probably more of a blocker. He's really tall. <laughs> That's what I remember. Let's see if it's good. Color looks amazing. It's bright. It's pretty clear. Just looks kind of resilient in a way. Straight off the bat, what I get is cassis, raspberry, a little bit of pencil shavings, plum, vanilla. Pretty decent tannin structure, starting to suck the moisture out of my mouth. It's aged in oak. It's expressive through the vanilla that you get. This is California Cabernet, a good one. So this is Yao Family Wines. They range from 40 bucks to well over $500. What those price points tell me, it's pretty serious. The oak that they're using, the techniques that they're using, the vineyards that they're purchasing fruit from. So this is $98, that's quality. I think you're getting what you pay for. And I don't know too much about it. If I just look at the label, it just says it's from Napa Valley. It doesn't give me any more detail. I think at $98, I should kind of know it should come from a single vineyard, or you know maybe it's a blend of several different single vineyards. I don't know any of that information. It's a great Cabernet, but I think at that price point, I need to know a little bit more about it. I would give this wine the steak emoji. This wine is perfect for grilling, big meat, perfect. So next up, we have Aisha Curry's Domaine Curry, and this is her Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc 2021. All right, so this is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. This is from Napa Valley. This is from the Calistoga region, so up north. I kind of don't really know what to expect. Very grassy. It smells just like when you open a bag of Skittles. You open the bag of Skittles, you smell them all, so it's like, Oh, it's this burst of kind of fruit. It makes me smile. Definitely like tropical fruit and maybe a little mango. The most prevalent thing is mangoes. And apparently, Aisha Curry used to be on the mango board. Obviously, she likes mangoes. It tastes pretty amazing, really great acid. It's like less minerality, which you would find in, say, in a place like Bordeaux, and probably a little bit more alcohol. So it, it definitely has some weight and body to it. But this is great Sauvignon Blanc from Napa. This is good. $65. Oh, sh all right, so this is $65, so it's really interesting because like at that price point, $65, I feel like maybe it excludes a lot of people from wanting to be able to try the wine. But even at $65, I think the wine is solid. I f still feel like this is worth it in that category. So as far as emoji goes, I would have to give this the surprise emoji. I was just pleasantly surprised and maybe slightly caught off guard because I thought this was going to be inundated with oak, and it's not and it's actually pretty delicious. All right, so next up we have Jim Nance. He's a sports broadcaster, football, basketball, and golf. This is called The Calling. This is a Russian River Pinot Noir, and this comes from a single vineyard called the Fox Den Vineyard. This one's pretty interesting. It's a pretty heavy bottle. I think the label here is kind of the most distinctive. It looks like it's a metal thing that's glued on here or attached. I wonder how much this bottle costs. It's gotta be like, it's a big part of the cost of the wine. The bottle's really heavy. I don't know anything about Fox Den Vineyard, <laughs> Do not. And that's the great part about wine. There's no possible way that you can know everything. And that's kind of the cool part of like being in this business is that because you never stop learning. All right. Dried cranberry, cherries, a little bit of tea, like black tea. This smells like slightly spicy, like nutmeg is what I'm getting. That's Russian River Valley Pinot Noir. That's pretty tasty. So this wine weighs in at about 14 and a half percent. And so that's big. You know, anything over 13 and a half percent is considered a big wine, but the alcohol doesn't really show. It isn't, it's not disruptive in this wine. It's pretty well ingrained in the wine. It's not overly hot. It seems like it's a classic example of where it's from. And this wine is delicious. Yeah, the Russian River Valley is located in Sonoma and it's definitely got like this really kind of great microclimate for Pinot Noir. So it's pretty cool space. It has a little bit of fog that kind of rolls in in the early mornings to kind of keep it cool. And Pinot Noir thrives there. And this is pretty tasty. I love Pinot Noir from all different parts of the world. One of my favorite places to drink Pinot Noir is from the Russian River Valley. And this wine is delicious and I'm gonna give it the yum emoji. So next up, our wine is from Maynard James Keenan, the lead singer of Tool. And this is called Caduceus Lake Cortigiani Onesta 2017. So for all you guys that hit me up and left comments in the comment section, this is for you. This was a highly requested wine and I felt like if we were gonna do it again, we had to have this wine. Yeah, Maynard James is a pretty big wine guy. There's a documentary about him, about the wines that he makes. All right, we're gonna open this up here. Well, 2017, so it definitely has some bottle maturity to it. You can see the color looks a little brickish here. Smell a little leather. It's a tad bit of smoke. That's like dried plum, cranberry, really good acid. I'm salivating right now. I think that's due to the Barbera. So it's about 90% Barbera and 10% Merlot. So Merlot is gonna give it this kind of plummy, ripe flavor to it. And then Barbera lends a little bit of acid and also a little bit of fruit as well. Wow, this wine is pretty balanced and pretty tasty, actually. It smells old world. If I was tasting this wine in a blind tasting, to me, smelling the wine automatically, it's not a lot of fruit. 
that jumps out of the glass, which to me is, is a pleasant surprise, especially coming from some place like Arizona. What you think about is desert, but there's definitely different micro regions that are better and different grapes that are suited to a warmer climate. So the closer you are to the equator, the warmer it is, which means that you get riper fruit. Riper fruit means more sugar. Sugars are translated into alcohol and alcohol is perceived as body weight on the palate. So this wine is $50 and I'm not conflicted by that in any way. This wine is really good and I think it's, it's worth 50 bucks actually. Emojis, emojis. When you kind of peel back the layers of the onion and understand this wine completely, your mind is kind of blown by that it's from Arizona. I think in the industry, we, we would call this a ringer. So we would put this wine in a blind tasting. And so we would put it in with other Barberas. And I think a lot of people would call this Barbera from Italy. And so for that, I would give it a mind blown emoji. There were quite a few standouts, actually more than I anticipated. My overall favorite wine today was probably the Eric Weinheim. Yamin was great, Pursued by Bear was great. I mean, there's so many ones that were just like fun to taste and interesting, a really great overall showing of quality wine today, whether or not a celebrity was involved or not. Ultimately, I always preach that you're an expert in your own taste. You should drink what you like, not what Kurt Russell likes, not what Pursued by Bear likes. I go back, his, his name is Kyle McLaughlin, sorry. <laughs> Got it, not, his name is not Pursued by Bear. <laughs>